everyone, and welcome to another episode of Messy and Co. I am Ashley here with my great co-host Gian, uh, live for a what is going to imagine? I imagine be a very interesting, tense, or maybe not tense. I don't know what the word is like. There's just a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack, and I'm sure that emotions might be running high. People are going to be very opinionated on what happened yesterday, what didn't happen. So it'll be, a, I think it'll be an interesting live um, and it'll be fun to see what everybody thinks. But yeah. Yeah. And so, so yeah, we're here live to um, obviously go over last night's match where Inter Miami lost uh, by one goal, one, two, to, um, to Monterrey after uh, a game where Messi did not play after there was a lot of maybe speculation and sources and reports saying he would. He did not end up playing. They say he's towards the end of his rehab and they didn't want to risk it. So that's definitely something we're going to have to go into. Um, But, you know, the game had a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of highlight and low light moments for Inter Miami. And um, when it's all said and done, the fact of the matter is, is that we're one goal down. They scored two away goals and we have to go play next Wednesday in Monterrey in what will be an incredibly, incredibly difficult game. Um, maybe with Messi, maybe without, but yeah, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things to discuss, a lot of people who are angry about certain things, less angry about others, maybe resigned to the fate of the fact that Messi is 36 and has a lot of miles on and maybe his, uh, I don't want to say his excitement because I don't think he's that kind of guy, but just maybe the miles on him are just reaching a point where he can't play through stuff as much as he used to and that Inter Miami is going to get, unfortunately, the short end of that stick, which is that he just isn't as available as we would have hoped. So With all of that said, Gian, um, we were both at the game last night, obviously, and and it was a really good environment. It was fun. It was interesting. Uh, The game had a lot of ups and downs. But what are just your your overall thoughts about Messi not playing, about the scoreline, how everything went down? You know, start there. Um, I'll say that whereas I'm not necessarily the biggest, like, fan of the strategy that was that that strategy yesterday for how he managed that game i i maybe would have done it a bit different but still it was working right we had the one yeah we kind of differ on that i I thought it was okay i just think that some things were out of his control but we were we were up by one goal so I, i i can't complain too much there obviously there's a big difference when you're playing against one of the best teams in mexico one of the top offensive teams in conca champions cup and then you have uh, kind of a boneheaded move there by one of the youngsters that leaves you with 10 men and just completely messes up your strategy and messes up how you have to manage the game. But until then, he was getting the job done. Uh, that that was up 1-0. And then as soon as David Ruiz gets his second yellow, gets his red, something that definitely could have been avoided. It was It was definitely an unnecessary, unnatural move that he does. I mean, it was also sold very well to the referee because i mean it was very like light it was a a push up and then the the hand i think barely grazes the forehead and you know he basically the mexican player basically acted like he had a concussion and then as soon as the the our players would have done the same thing then the second no no i don't but i'm saying that that's he's he sold it to the referee um and then i think within like three minutes that first goal comes that tying goal so i think that we were good. We were good. I, I liked what I saw from from Inter Miami. I think that everybody was was playing well. I think that unfortunate, quite unfortunate for us to get that result at home, where anytime you play at home in a tournament that requires two legs, one at home and one away, and you're starting at home, you want to make sure that you come out with that win. So next game over there in Monterrey is going to be really difficult. Probably the most difficult game Inter Miami has ever played, and I. I think that it's really going to be it's all going to be on whether Messi plays or not i think that's the only i think that's really the only way that we come out winning here is is if Messi plays and but yeah there's just a lot of a lot of things to talk about there's you know talking we can get more into as this live goes along we can get more into 
Messi missing and and what that really means is it uh, is it uh, was it surprising how bad is the injury does this uh, I mean does Inter Miami kind of have to look at its future differently now knowing that you know Messi might be missing more games than we thought and then just things like David Ruiz the youngster getting a red card um, we've got Robert Taylor being getting injured we have Tata Martino making some comments that I wanted to talk about. Uh, in post game, that were some comments that I ne didn't necessarily didn't sit well with me. I kind of wanted to talk about some of those, and then I don't know. This was kind of on the news as well, but I don't know if you guys know. But Tano Ortiz, the coach from Monterrey, had some not so professional comments that he made before the game. There were things that Tata Martino and Messi kind of took offense to, and then yeah. they actually went out towards after the game. They actually went up to the ref and then they also confronted Dano Ortiz and some other players in the dressing rooms and there was an altercation there just verbal nothing physical and uh there's some things that have come out of that I kind of want to talk to as well but there's a lot to unpack a yeah lot. a lot to unpack and I think we should get to some of the comments because we see a lot of really good comments coming in um look the first Thing that we have to there's a lot of things to address but the first one is um is that messy messy is getting hurt a lot and and you know it's easy to look now i mean hindsight is 2020 but god i can think of another uh, how many things are we going to say about how ridiculous that preseason was for for this because you know to say he wouldn't still have this issue with the hamstring is not fair to say because he probably would um but it just all of the unnecessary strain and time and energy that this team had had to go through before we had the opening kick of the season um and the just the volume of games we've had the travel we've had it's it's been it's been hard and 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 knowing what we know, knowing that Messi is going to go play in Copa America, like there's just no other way. It's it seems like it's a very disappointing beginning and and situation this season where a lot of people understandably are getting pretty frustrated with the Inter Miami organization with the fact that they keep being very closed lipped about his status and the extent of his injuries. And look, it's on MLS and it's on these governing bodies to make the rules more strict. If you want more honest answers about injuries, look, we've seen it happen in NBA, NFL, like they don't want it that, you know, Inter Miami don't want to say that Messi's going to be out for a month. They, they don't want to say that if they don't have to, because it affects competition. It affects how the other teams prepare. And it affects ticket sales. Like, let's not let's not beat around the bush. It affects ticket sales. They invested a lot of money in him and a lot of money in the other players. And the fact that he's missing so many games, knowing he's going to be missing a huge chunk for Copa America, it's it's a, it's like worst case scenario to start the season. Um, so it's it's tough to see, and it's and it's you know it's a shame. Obviously, though, you know, we can't blame last night's performance on the fact that Messi didn't play because I think that Tata had a great game plan for last night and it wasn't fun and it wasn't, you know, what you would want to do when you have a big side coming to play you in a difficult game. But knowing what he knew about who was available and the, you know, the depleted roster, the injuries, the availability he and and the fact that hopefully Messi will be available for the second leg next week. I'm sure the plan was to try to either win 1-0 or to to draw and give themselves a chance next week. The game plan worked. The the defensive structure was the best defense I've ever seen in their Miami play. The first 60 minutes, the most organized, compact, disciplined defense. And then David Ruiz with one of the worst five minutes I've seen in such a high pressure game in a long time, because the first yellow card was avoidable. But even after that, and we said it to each other too, we're like, he's going to get another yellow and he's going to get it quickly. Um, just not understanding the situation, not appreciating the fact that this is an elimination tournament, that this isn't like MLS. There isn't 60 more games. You don't need to be the hero. You're winning. Just relax, relax. And he didn't. And 
should Tata have maybe tried and take took taken him out in that first five minutes after he got the yellow card? Maybe. But did Tata think he was going to get two yellow cards within five minutes? Probably not. So it's like, you know, it's difficult because in the end, Inter-Miami did enough to get a, a result and give themselves a chance in the second leg. But things were out of their control, very unlucky circumstances, ill-disciplined, and it leads to a moment now where we're saying Messi is not playing The team is not performing well on any of the competition stages. Fans are angry. What are we going to do? So I I, I just going back to what I said, I think that I'm not. a. So when when you play at home, I think it's important for you to be the commanding team on the field. I think it's important for you to take the initiative and go out and look for the win. And that's why for me, it wasn't something that I very much enjoyed to see that they come out and play a four five, uh, four five one, basically where he's got five in the midfield. He had uh, Gressel and Robert Taylor until Robert Taylor uh, got injured playing all in the midfield. And he has Suarez up top by himself. I think he showed too much respect, uh, way too much respect to Monterrey. I think that him allowing them to have possession of the ball was, you know, not the most ideal. I think that you want to come out and put pressure on them early and go and try to look for the goals, try to be aggressive, try to get two, three goals at home, knowing that you want to head over and go into play into Monterrey with a comfortable lead with two goals up, um, maybe three, I don't know as opposed to going and just, you know, giving them the ball and being dominated. And again, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't go too hard into Tata because I understand that it was working like that. You know, it's, it's different that like we were up one zero, but it's not. And we also there. missed a few sitters again, where we didn't finish that, well, where we really that- could have been up to no before the red card happened. And but that's also just because of the fact that Messi wasn't up there, and the guys that were up there weren't necessarily the ones that 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 typically finish those types of plays. Like for example, there was a one uh, one play where Suarez had the ball, and he does a one-two pass uh, from with Gressel. Gressel gives yeah. Suarez the ball. Suarez touches it back to Gressel. Gressel ends up with a bad touch, plays it too far ahead of him, and he doesn't. I mean, he yeah. if he would have played it right, he would have had a one-on-one versus the goalie. But he plays it too long. The defender catches up, and then he he it just didn't work. And then the second one that was really pretty pretty clear was, um, where Gomez gets the ball, but puts a nice through ball right into the area for for Ruiz, and Ruiz does the same thing. He lets it go. To, he kind of jumps over the ball. He lets the ball go too long, and then defender ends up sweeping yeah. the ball from under him. And those are just things that yeah. you, like if if that was Robert Taylor, if that was. Messi, I think those are ended up in in goal. So I think that to, you know, for for Tata, I think that that was difficult to not have those offensive guys to be able to finish those plays. But um, yeah, so to me, like I said, I'm not a fan of that. I think you need to go out and look for the game. But um, to his credit, he was up one zero, and then this you know all of this thing happens with David Ruiz. Yeah. But I think that from then on, like some of the things that Tata said in his comments was like, he said, okay, like w- when we went out to start this game, I knew that we were going to be dominated by Monterrey. Yeah. Like his whole plan was from the beginning to give possession to Monterrey and just be dominated and, and try to fight yeah, out. Yeah, but Tian, they, we didn't have Messi. Like what do you, what no, was the alternative? Us so that's, trying that's, to be aggressive and lose 4-0? No. Why would we lose 4-0 because we're aggressive? 4-0 because we're aggressive. Like that's the whole problem with this team and it's so annoying. Like it, I don't, I, this team cannot predicate everything it does on Messi. And like, we need to understand Messi is not going to be playing a lot of the games. This, not every team in MLS doesn't have Messi. We're the only team that has Messi. Like you can't. I know, but you, the other teams like have rosters built. But so to we be had more balance. Roster. We had a good roster too. What do you mean? Like well, you can't. We did have the, a good roster. Yeah, but not compared to Monterey. Like we have a good roster, but our and it was a great point someone made. Like when you looked at the the and this, I want to bring this up really quickly, just like to to counter you a little bit. Like there was a tweet, and I I don't have it in front of me, but basically it was saying that our bench, like the players that we subbed in, average a salary of sixty thousand dollars a year. 
But that's because of injuries. That's that's because of injuries. That is that 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 doesn't add context to anything. I thought I saw I saw that tweet too. I'm sorry, but that tweet doesn't add context to anything. You're talking about you had Santos but it adds context Kobe to Sol last night's game, which is why he played the way he did. If he didn't have injuries, he wouldn't have played that way. You no, know, because those people were on the bench. He had the, the team that he had on the field was enough to compete against Monterrey. And it's such a mental issue. I swear it is such a mental issue for Tata and whoever else is on there that the moment Messi isn't available, it's like, okay, we're not good enough to go against Monterrey. Yeah, you are. Like you have in the back, you have Alba who is a freaking all-star from Barcelona. You you spent money on Toto uh, to bring in Toto Aviles and Freire. You spent money to bring, in, to bring in Chelo Wenga from Boca Juniors, Stunning. Who, who's playing very well. You have one of the best goalies in MLS, in my opinion, in calendar. Yeah. You have Busquets, who is, I mean, I don't even need to describe Busquets. You have Diego Gomez, who is a phenom, amazing for Paraguay. He's freaking balling up. And then up top, you have Suarez, one of the best nines in the history of soccer. Of soccer. You have Gressel, who is a proven vet, who is an MLS champion. You have um, Robert Taylor, who his attacking skill set is really good. He can create his own shots. He can take you off the dribble. He can do, like, the only difference there was Again, it's it's I not the only difference as if Messi taking Messi is not, but you look at that squad and you have enough to compete. I'm sorry, but if whoever watched the game yesterday and looked at Monterrey, they didn't look as scary as we thought they were gonna be agreed. at all. They didn't agreed. look okay, as scary. So, so agreed, agreed. We need, Let's we need to go out and, and try to score, not just sit back. Like I I don't know. I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but that's how I feel about it, man. The, the, I the also think that's team, hindsight, it's like mental. Messi's well, here's out. the oh thing: if God. what if Ruiz didn't come out, and what if we won one zero or two or two nil? Like if we did that, Ruiz didn't make that mistake, and we won. Would you be saying the same thing about the formation, or would you have been like, "Wow, Tata was right on this one"? No, I would have said the same thing about the formation because I, I I don't like that, but I I but I wouldn't have. I wouldn't complain. Like I'm not. The point I'm trying to make is I'm not complaining because I understand that we probably would have still we could have still won. And if if David Ruiz, the whole David Ruiz fiasco didn't happen and he got the red, that's why I, I wouldn't have criticized. I'm just simply talking about, I think other coaches, I've seen other coaches, when you play at home, you don't give up possession to, to, to Monterrey. And I, what I'm fighting back is the whole notion of, oh, it's okay to give possession to Monterrey and just wait for them to attack you and try to play out of transition because we don't have Messi. Like that, that's like a BS excuse. So we don't have Messi. You still have a good team. Like, oh, we suck because we don't have Messi. And if we don't, if Messi doesn't play, you need to play defensive and you play with one striker up front every game until Messi comes back and the other team gets to attack us as much as they want because we don't have Messi. Like, well, I think for other games, I, I agree with you. I think, I just, I think that. I don't think you're giving enough credit to Monterey and I don't think they looked good last night, but like, before last night, like I mean, they're they're an absolute juggernaut and powerhouse. They're the best team in this in this continent, like in this side of these three countries. Like they're the best team. So, I think I don't I understand what you're saying. And they and Tata needs to figure out how to win without Messi. A hundred percent. I think that's that my main point. What you just said. And, and I think that there's out. more of an argument for that when it was the two New York games we just played or Montreal, for example are games we should have won and that we are easily good enough to win and it and and that it was poor tactics and poor personnel. I think that. I think last night it just it's it's hard. I I I for I just think that and look, I'm the one who's normally pretty harsh on Tata. I just think that I can understand why it ended up being what how it was. It didn't work out. Here's a comment I want to talk about though and this is something that's a that, oh no, sorry. Wait, my, my these comments are going too quickly. Everyone's saying so much. I, this is the comment I meant to put up. So here, let me tell you something. Let's let's erase the game last night, okay? Like let's say you didn't watch it and you didn't see the claps and you didn't, you know, Davaroos. Let's say all those things didn't happen. And I just said to you, um, in the end, it was a close game. We had good points. They had good points. We lost one zero. Uh, next week we're taking David Ruiz out of the lineup and we're adding Messi, but it was pretty close. What would you say? Would you, I know you wouldn't be, you'd still be nervous, but if I were to just saying that to you blind, 
maybe there's a little chance. Okay, that's not too bad. Like, so you're saying they didn't dominate us all game. No, 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 they didn't dominate us all game. In fact, we had some really good chances, just didn't finish. Um, okay, but we didn't have Messi. No, we didn't have Messi. Oh, someone got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone got hurt. Oh, but next week you will you will have Messi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the person who didn't play well, he's not gonna play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now what? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not all hope is lost. It's not like we lost three nil. It's gonna I don't be think hope is lost. incredibly difficult. Incredibly I, difficult, but it's one zero. That's all it is. Uh so I don't think I, I don't think I, I I think Inter Miami played a good game yesterday. I really do. I think Inter Miami, whether I disagree or agree with with the approach, whatever. I'll give Tata the merit that he deserves. Where he had Inter Miami playing a good game, we we could have won that game, and I think that now, I think that these teams are more evenly matched than I thought they would be. Yeah, that's going, what I learned too. I'm Monterrey. disappointed, but I learned that they're a lot more even. And I feel, like I said, if Messi comes, I have a little bit more hope than I would have had if we got this result last night and Messi did play. That's all yeah, I'll but, say. But you know what the biggest problem is, though? It's the two goals they scored. That makes it because we can't – now we have to win by, I believe, at least – Two goals, like if one zero doesn't, we don't. Right. If we, we win one zero, we we they pass. If we win two zero, it's uh, what is it? It's three, they 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 still win. If we win, no, three, why? One, if we win two zero, yeah, why would they still no, no, win? No, they would. We win. Sorry, we win two zero. Oh, yeah. So the two zero works. The one zero doesn't. Um, two one, two one. It go. It's even. So. I'm trying. I'm just trying to think of some of the scores that it would take for so us that's to what I'm win. Saying, is two nil or two one? Not. I think two one is an inc- and Messi plays is an incredibly realistic scoreline. Difficult, but incredibly realistic. Two zero two one are the are the two that that are realistic that can get us through. Or what two one? So that's what I wanted. I want us to put five, behind right. that last night, and I want us to say that look that there are certain things that I do think are important that we think about and that we understand, and that. Inter Miami and Tata are going to have to start making some changes to not make every game dependent on Messi. But, but with all that said, with how everything that could have gone wrong almost went wrong yesterday, the cards stacked against us X, Y, and Z. Okay, we're going into next Wednesday. I'd say maybe it's like 35, 65, 35, us like, you know, winning or having a chance 65, not, which isn't great, but it's better than 90, 10 or, you know, 80, 15, you know what I mean? Like there's, I still feel like I'm still excited for the game. I'm hopeful Messi's back and we have a chance. That's all I can think about. Um, A couple of things. Go ahead. I was going to mention, I think that it's important to also note that whatever we did in this game, like as far as strategy, that's out the door for yeah. next game. You have to go out and look for for the game. There's, and that that's going to be interesting to see now if uh, how how Monterrey plays it. I, I feel like Monterrey is going to do the opposite of what, what what Miami did. I don't think Monterrey is going to do like we did and 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 sit back and and just you know take give into possession of the ball. I think they're going to go out and look to put it away early, which could be good or bad. Cause if we're able to maintain that attack next, uh, next game in Monterrey, that should open up some spaces for Inter Miami to attack. Yeah. Um, so we'll see with that. I just, I just know that they're not going to be able to do that four five, one that they did here in, Inter, in, in at Chase stadium. They're going to have to go out and, and really be very good. Very and if you have Messi, and if I see a front three of, uh, what I imagine is going to be Messi uh suarez and gomez then i feel better or who knows or maybe, you see a, maybe you see a even though I, I don't know it just depends how attacking he wants to be but you can always do a you can always do campana and uh and suarez also but. i also on that point i think it's what i am not happy about with tata because like i said i think last night i think it was actually a good it was a good plan with the personnel he had unexpected and and for the most for the first 65 minutes did exactly what he wanted and you know he he didn't get two yellow cards himself right that wasn't him he can't he can't be in david ruiz's head he didn't expect robert taylor to get injured and have to make that substitution like those things were out of his control however i think it's very unlucky that for these last two games 
Leo Campana has gotten zero minutes because what the team has needed in these last 20 minutes of these games is they've needed fresh legs and inspiration and desire because Luis Suarez, who has been creating good chances, good opportunities, doing well, missed a couple that you, you, you know, you wish he had made, but hasn't done anything in particularly wrong still needed someone he needed they needed more energy and fresh body and fresh legs and movement and something to scare the defense and Campana could have provided it and I think it's really unlucky that he hasn't gotten a chance in the last two games and I part of me is starting to wonder why because he's shown time and time again that he can score and that he is persistent and that's what we needed. Why is here's a comment by Carlos? Why is Campana in Tata's doghouse? I want to know that too because I think it's ve- it's weird. It's especially against New York City FC where there was zero reason to play Suarez on ninety minutes. Absolutely zero reason for him not to come in. Seems just seems weird. It just does. I don't know. Uh, well, according to Tata, one of the reasons he didn't put him in last game when he didn't take Suarez out is because, oh, not that necess- I don't know if it was that he didn't want to take Suarez out or he didn't want to play them both at the same time, but he basically didn't want to take out one of his wingers is what he didn't want to do because he said, if I take out one of my wingers and I put Campana in, who's going to get the ball to Campana? I need my wingers. That's basically what he said in one of those. Um, somebody, I don't know if somebody asked him. I think him he said that for New York about. City. I know what you're talking about. I think he said yeah, that. Yeah. For, but then switch yeah. him for a comp- Then switch them. Then take Suarez out because it, you don't need him to play 90 minutes against against New York City FC. And then, look, you know, I mean, to say that you don't think that any of them were tired yesterday, I think would be. Well, not- I, I think that that's probably one of the things I, you know, yesterday thinking about it. In post game, Tata had mentioned about how because of the fact that they were basically getting dominated on possession, there was a lot of coverage that they had to do, and they were you know pretty, basically running around everywhere trying to you know cover the ball. That they were basically tired, that they were gassed, especially playing down ten men. Yeah, uh, that they were gassed and without legs for the last twenty minutes, which I thought was interesting because if only they had fresh legs to substitute in. They, yeah, I was basically you're the one that can hand that, that's your decision. Like, and we have two unused that, so, again, so I'm not sure why you were complaining about not having fresh legs when it's basically you're the only one that can change that, you're the only one that can make the substitutions. And at that point, it made, it made sense when you're maybe you know, you get that you get scored on three minutes after that. We goes out with the red card, maybe that's when you take out where there's 20 minutes left, you take out Suarez, you put Campana in, and Campana, you're still going to have the attacking presence, but you're going to have way more on the defensive end because he's going to be, he, he runs more, he's more active. And that would have been, to me, the more natural thing. I don't know why he didn't do, make that move. The only thing I'm thinking of is he knows that Suarez might not do anything for on, on that end, but he'll, in one or two plays, he he can score for you at any given moment. That's but only how about for Gomez about or for someone else who there was a lot of yellow cards we had. And then, and because of that, like, look, the second goal was, and, and I think Gomez played a great game and worked his ass off, but the moment was he made a mistake because he was too tired. And so he made the mistake and that's how they scored the goal. And there's no other way to say it, but that, and it's not a fair it's not a criticism to say that he cost the game because he didn't, but there were, you know, he was one of the examples of we couldn't get out from the back because everyone was just so exhausted. Well, then put someone fresh in, put in Sunderland, put in someone like, you know, it's to go have two unused subs is crazy to me. Yeah. I I, I didn't understand that. And then we've seen that before. We've seen uh, some of the subs that, um, you know, sometimes the, the, the lack of rather the lack of subs um, and being able to adapt, I think, throughout the game. That's something that we've seen kind of uh, be a little frustrating with that. that it was, I thought it was also kind of it, it was kind of frustrating, too, that he puts in Santos and he had to take him out as well. Like, I think that also changed the, yeah. the dynamic of the game, having to take out another attacking presence because Santos was doing good. I think, I think he, that first game that he had a couple of, uh, was it against New York city? Was that his first game? I think, or the, no, there's a previous one um, where he got subbed he's in. Great, he's, though, I agree. He's, he's been really doing really good. good. He's been doing really good. And it just it stinks that that opportunity was taken away from him. He only got a few minutes, but he was doing good. Um, but you know, 
it just totally changes the game when you go down 10 men. He, they, he was already giving possession to to Monterrey, yeah. but they were being but they were but they were being successful, which is I, I think you mentioned it earlier on, and I just want to mention it for those who maybe are just joining. Man, we've tried that in the past where we would kind of give up some possession, and because of the defense, we just weren't able to hold do that because we'd get killed on defense. This defense looked so good. So good. That back four, the, so the silver lining from last night is that this back four is perfect and it's exactly what we need. And if other circumstances were different, like I'd feel very good about the fact that we have that. But, you know, Robert Taylor, that injury. And I, I saw it the moment I saw it the moment it happened to and it took him another five or ten minutes before he came out. But when he pulled his leg, like I saw it and I saw him running really labored after. And I was like, damn, that really sucks. Um, and also, you know, I, I see comments about like, well, who would you have put in in his place? Like, who could they take out? The other rest of the team was not at the quality. Campana is at the quality, though, where he could play at in this type of game. Who you choose to take him out for could have been Gressel. And then you move to a 4-4-2. Could have been, you know, it, it could have been Gomez. Like, and I and I understand the trepidation of it, but 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 Campana is a quality and caliber player who would come in and who still adds to the team. It's not it's not Sunderland or Noah Allen or someone where you may be like, oh well, it's not worth the risk of the fresh legs because they're not good enough. Campana is good enough, and so that's what you know, a, a, for everything else, that is what makes me, yeah, no, I agree with that comment that I would choose Gomez over Sunderland agreed, but I don't know if I would choose Gomez and Gressel being completely gassed and Busquets being completely gassed, all three of them completely gassed. I don't think you, you're not, you're telling me not one of them could have been changed for Campana yeah. and you do a four, four, two for the last 10 minutes, or even for Suarez. Like, I think, I just think that he it's not like he's a bad player you know it's not like you're you're diminishing your team for him i think hindsight's 2020 and i in those last 10 minutes when everyone was so tired you needed one more change you needed one more ability to just get get some more movement because because yeah. monterey were were like smelled blood and they knew what they were doing none of those none of those goals yesterday were on the defense not the at defense all played very well it was that that so there was this goal, which I, it was the like I, I wouldn't put that necessarily on Aviles though. It was more on Gomez. I think Gomez didn't control the ball well. That was on on him. He just he he had the ball right on his feet off of that. Say, Aviles it would have been a four four two. Sorry, right? It would have been a three four two. But sorry, keep going. Then, no, yeah. So I I don't I wouldn't even put, I wouldn't put that on Aviles. I think that was Gomez's fault. Gomez. Didn't no, I think Aviles well. had a good game. I think he was and very then, composed. And then that other goal, that I. I I was looking at the replay, the one that um, the one that bounces off of Bus like Busquets heads it towards Calendar. Calendar uh, deflects it. That first one, yeah. and then that scores it. I think that the more I look at it, I don't think Busquets even saw the ball. I think Busquets had his head, and it. I feel like unless he tried to head it and it, it just went the wrong way, but it almost seems like he wasn't expecting the ball because yeah. two players jumped right. Yeah, in it front was of unlucky. Him. But that was just that was just really unlucky. There's, I don't think there's much. Both you goals done were unlucky because the initial action was right, right? Like the initial yeah. one for that one, it was, it was, it would have been a well defended corner. Like Busquets was in the right place to head it away. It was, it, it had a you know a freak touch, and then the second one, it, we had the opportunity to clear it, and Gomez had a mis made a mistake with his touch. So to your point, I don't think they weren't defensive faults, but they were still situations created because you know all these other factors led to what happened but i want to well, what, what, how do you guys feel about the defense because i know that the defense has been basically the, the the talk over the last few games um how did you guys feel especially now that you have cello and you're back to that that uh two center back position uh or um yeah those two I'll center tell you back. what i love cello yeah, no, no. Cello was playing. And Freire amazing. played great too. He didn't play like someone who's been injured. So I was very happy with this performance. Yeah. Are you guys still worried about Miami's defense or no? Yeah, let us know in the comments. Um, I'm curious because I, I honestly, since Cello arrived and we're back to the two center backs instead of three, I think this team has looked so, a, a lot better, a lot better. Um, Do you think? Um, 
obviously we're going to do a preview for the game on Saturday, but just out of curiosity, um, do you think that Messi is going to play on Saturday in the end? Like well, do I think 20 Messi's minutes? Gonna play. Wait, is, is he going to play against Colorado or is he going to play against Monterey? You're saying? Colorado. Like, do you think he's going to be a sub for Colorado? Because uh, I really don't think they're going to make his first game back after five weeks be in Monterey. Like that would, that would surprise me. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think Messi's playing. But at this, at the end of the day, I, I I'm not. I, I'm almost at the point where I'm just tired of even guessing. Like I'm. I. I. I really don't think anybody knows. I don't think anybody knows yeah. at this point. Um, if Agreed Messi's with playing. this comment by Carlos. I was worried about the Edlin trade, but Chalo has been an amazing upgrade. I wish we had him two weeks sooner. But agreed, he's been fantastic. Tony saying. Def looks promising, but we won't have this back for for many games. I don't know. I think I think the plan is going to always believe uh, is always going to be to have the back four if possible. I think sometimes when circumstances or injuries change, maybe not. But I, I don't um, think you ever. I don't think you ever intentionally see a, a, a three center backs uh, ever again, unless it's a case amen, like black story. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, unless it's a case like yesterday where he had to go with, th with three center backs because of the the red card, but I really don't think you ever see. Yeah. Three no, the defense backs. was great. The again, the defense, the setup was was great. I think if if it was a different circumstance and like you know, I know we keep saying if Messi was there, but like let's this team is built because Messi is supposed to be there. I know he can't play every game. I know it, we still have enough good players where we should be okay without it, but. All of that to say, I, the midfielders, the wingers, everything is still built for Messi to play. So in, in a situation where, like, if we had Messi playing, like, I think the back four was great. If we had Redondo, I think our midfield three is solid. Gressel has been good this year. I still wish, like, I think he, like, I'd say his overall game to game, I feel like he's like an a minus to b plus and i just wish he was like always an a plus because i think he he does add a lot of value i think there just still are moments in the game where i'm like oh a little more composure a little faster a little better decision but he puts himself in such good situations i think the back four and and the the con, con construction of the team is 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 right and is beneficial um, it's just how, how can we bounce back and look, we just found out today we got $150,000 in general allocation money and an international roster spot. Do we think Rojas is going to come? Do we think we're going to see a new winger added because, you know, the team needs it? Is Kremaski coming back this weekend? Is, uh, Negri coming back this weekend? Like, I don't know. A lot, like as always, and a lot of unknown. Is free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, sailor, 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 sailor. I think that he is. Um, I think I feel. I actually feel more comfortable with sailor than Kristoff. A hundred percent agree. And sailor looks good. Last he's, game, I think he's the third option. I think he's. I think it's Freire and Aviles, unless yeah. you know, unless something drastic changes. And then I think it's sailor before. Before Kristoff and before Noah Allen too, I think Sailor does a good job. I, I again, you know, he he doesn't get enough playing time where I think he, he can become so. Sailor is the third option. You, you're good. I mean, unless there's an injury, he's not going to be be your starter. But I think that right now, that's where the depth is missing. Like as yeah. far as defense, um, the depth is missing at the center back position in defense because on the left side, obviously you have Alba, and then right behind him is Negri, and it looks like he's almost ready to be with the first team. He played a game with uh, IMCF2, so he yeah. looks like he'll be ready. And then on the right side for Cello, it's going to be Ian Frey. Um, but then behind the center backs, again, it's, it's Sailor. I think you need yeah. one more. Um, that needs to be better. As, uh, let's see. Um, I see a couple questions and a couple comments about Farias. Um, Facundo Farias is out for the year when he tore he tore his ACL or his Achilles. No, ACL. He tore his ACL during the first preseason game in El Salvador, and he's out for the season. He won't be back at all. He hopefully will be back for next season in 2025. So a huge – obviously, another thing, hindsight 2020, like <clears throat> it, how different would we be if we had Farias from game one? You know, what would this look like now? How different would it be if we had every game Suarez, Farias, and Messi starting? Like, yeah, and well, Rodon, imagine... Busquets, and Gomez. Yeah, things would be different. <laughs> no, no, of course. And even imagine if, if for this game, if Messi wasn't around, but then you had 
you had instead of Gressel on the right, you had Taylor and Farias on the left. Like yeah. that would have looked completely different too. And I really think that. Tell me what you think. I think that this uh, the way he played that four five one, or I, I, I he probably would have attacked more if he had Messi. He definitely. I would hope so. <laughs> he, no, yeah, like he would have looked like I, I. I don't think that they they would have been as defensive. I, I, I of course. Still, not. That's not that's that's still not an excuse. I, I don't want to go back to to. Our, I know, but I mean, it, it, fight, whatever. To yeah. say it's not an excuse though, like that is that's not truthful either. That's like if a team didn't have LeBron and or if, like a team has Tom Brady and Tom Brady got hurt and can't start, and so they're like. Uh, Bill Belichick's like, hey, we're going to probably do more running plays this game. And you're like, but no, we still have all these great receivers. Well, uh, you don't have Tom Brady. I disagree, but I don't want to open up a, a, a rehash the, the conversation. Everyone here is like, I love that American football analogy. I know exactly what yeah. you mean. Here's a comment, though, I want to talk about. Um, Al Alonzo, I think Alfonso, I know, is what you mean. Alfonso looks like he can run or just fresh legs. Yeah, let me tell you, Leo Alfonso has been great. And so far, limited minutes, but – plays with a lot of confidence a lot of uh silk a lot of smarts and i think he'll probably be start on saturday and so i'm excited to see how he plays and 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 how it goes yep um i wanted to talk a little bit about uh the comments made by the mexican coach, Monterey coach uh, yeah. from monterrey I see also a couple cool. comments that maybe Farias will come back before. Maybe he'll come back for the playoffs. I mean, if he does, then that's fantastic. I'm just saying I wouldn't expect him to come back. Tearing his ACL is usually a season-long injury. I, I, you know, if he can come back well, in October, Ian amazing, Frey. but I doubt it. Frey's like at nine months or something like that, nine, yeah. ten months. Negative, same thing. I think I think Frey's been out nine, and I think negative has been out ten months. That's wild. That's strange. And actually, I think that – that's slower than normal. I think for it usually is for an ACL, and I mean, it's look, about six to that's seven another, months. That's another conversation we can have is the inner Miami medical staff and uh, athletic trainers. You know, I think we've all seen some instances where questionable recovery, questionable fitness levels and muscle injuries. Um, but that's a can of worms. I don't know. I, I'm not a, I'm not a sports scientist. I'm not a athletic trainer. I can't really speak to it to a certain degree. Um, I hope it gets you know, it keeps improving is all I can say. So what uh, the coach, Tano Ortiz from Monterrey said before the game, like a, a day or so before the game, he was uh, being interviewed by uh, outlet in uh, Latin America. And he basically said everything that revolves around Messi can basically, everything that revolves around Messi can lead to sporting decisions and extracurricular decisions. What worries me the most are the extracurricular decisions. Soccer is a business, and the business side doesn't go in favor of Monterrey. And basically, he was alluding to the way that the refereeing would be for yeah. them in the game, saying ahead of basically saying ahead of time that yeah. he's worried that the whistle could go into Miami's way. Well, he didn't have to worry about that. It certainly didn't last night. Yeah. So so uh yeah inter miami's way to obviously promote messi and make sure messi continues on his way to the final and that's something that uh which is interesting because messi it just shows messi and tata martino pay attention to what's out there on on the outlets and that sort of thing but they basically took offense to what uh the coach said and then yeah. after the game they went questioning up to integrity him. you know yeah he's basically questioning the integrity of the game and and saying that they would have the upper hand uh inter miami would have the upper hand and messi and tata martino took offense to that and ended up confronting him and confronting some of the players in the uh dressing rooms and i thought that i don't know but to me i thought that was low class like i i, I hate i hate when referee and when um when coaches do that like that is so unprofessional that's not something you do, and I can understand why Messi and Tata Martino took offense to that. But one of the things I thought was interesting, too, after that, I don't know if you saw it, Ashley, but apparently they're saying that Monterrey put out a, uh, like a, a formal complaint to CONCACAF yeah. to do something about that. So now there's worry. I don't want to add more cause for concern, but now there's worry that is Messi 
or is Tata or are they going to have any repercussions where they would be maybe um, suspended for the game in Monterrey? Zero chance. Zero I know. Chance. That, I, know. I, I think zero chance, but that's what's being spoken about now that they actually made a formal complaint. Monterrey. Did well, and too. it's, and it's, it's so, it's like so messed up the initial point of saying, it. I mean, it's like, Louis Van Van Gaal in the World Cup, like you said it to Messi and it, it made him very mad and it, you know, worked out in this case, Messi didn't play, but, um, you know, <laughs> I, not everything's about refereeing because <clears throat> I don't think the results would have changed to last night, but I think that to, to, to some degree, like, I think that this referee, and I said this to you in the press box, he wasn't calling anything. He really, he really wasn't calling anything for Inter Miami. He didn't call a lot for Monterrey either, but he, I think he went past the point of like letting them play because I think there were a couple of things that got away and some like some moments where it was taking advantage of it and, and, and didn't get called. Like, I mean, the handball, the fact that it wasn't reviewed at all, I think is crazy because it looked like a handball and we didn't even get to see a replay of it. Yeah. I, I think, think the missed calls were even across the board, but they affected Inter Miami. But they, yeah. They were more intense ones for us. Like they, they yeah. made more of a difference in the outcome of the game. Um, the referee. Yeah. He, he was, he was a little too soft whistled. I think, you know, when I normally, where we like to say like, let the boys play, let everyone play. But I also, it's to a point where like, you know, if, if the tactical advantages are being met and, 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 and things are happening to, to negatively affect the game, it's like, well, you have to make calls. You have to, to get whistles. And, and look, there could, there was even for the first goal for Monterey, there was something to be said about maybe, I mean, it went to VAR, they deemed it not, but that maybe was, he, that's an offside. I, I still don't, I don't know how everybody else feels, but that's a offside big time to me. The player in, clearly interferes. He's in, he's offside. And he's in front of calendar. He's literally blocking. But maybe calendar. because it touched Busquets, they say no. I I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But that's what I'm. Well, you know, that's so. In the end, the comments by the Monterrey coach worked, and and that's what makes me upset because it's 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 when those kinds of tactics and 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 feelings and thoughts and trying to like get into people's heads and say things that really have nothing to do with on the field performance when they work is when it sucks. And again, to repeat myself, I don't think yesterday's uh, uh, game would have changed. Like I, the outcome feel feels like it was faded. Like that's kind of like a nil, like where there was a draw or a one goal deficit. I think that could have probably happened regardless, but it still sucks when that kind of, you know, feelings happen. Yeah. Um, I wish I could read, I wish I could read your name. I know. Thank you though. Thank you. I appreciate you being in here. Um, Are you guys reading Twitter comments? Yeah, we're reading all. We're reading all comments. Yeah, yeah. Um, Make sure you comment if you're on if you're on Twitter. If you're on YouTube, we're getting all your comments. So if we miss any, sorry, we're trying to go through all of them. Yeah, but, we're getting yeah. a lot, which is good. We're glad everyone is. I mean, obviously, this was quite a result and lots of storylines and headlines. Yeah, we'll see. But you know, all when everything is said and done, and like we said a lot of things went against us yesterday, whether it was our personnel, whether it was refereeing decisions, whether it was injuries, whether it was missed chances, all of those things that went against us. Right. Yeah. In the end, we're only one goal down. Yeah. And in the end, we are going to be going from no messy to yes, messy. And let, which I think, I mean, we have to assume we're going to assume it is if not, then yeah. the, the game's a wash. We lose. We're out of CONCACAF. Okay. That we're going to say that if Messi doesn't play, there's like a 2% chance we win. But if we can assume he is going to play well, now that makes next week more interesting, a lot more interesting. And all we can do is like the Dallas game last year. All you can do is believe and believe that this team can do something that there's still a chance that Messi is who's, you know, they've taken their time with his injury. They're managing him. Maybe he comes back stronger and in feeling better than he's felt in the last year. Cause you know, it's bothered him a lot over the last year. So maybe he comes back even stronger and better. Maybe we have players, come, we have more players coming back from injury. All we can hope for is a chance and an opportunity. And that's what we're going to get next Wednesday. Yeah. I think Saturday will be interesting to see if we get a couple of, maybe we see some minutes from maybe Messi, but from Kremaski, from Negri, maybe we see some minutes from there. Alfonso is going to get more chances to 
to play. Maybe Campana gets some minutes. There's still, you know, there's there's lots yeah. there's lots to go. So we got the name. It's Mustafa. So thank you, Mustafa. Thank That's you. That's a black story interpreting for us. Um, it's a, an Arabic name. So thank you, I Mustafa. Agree with this. Messi is worth two goals at least. It's math. It's mathematical. Yeah. Agreed. Um, this is a, so. This Inter Miami fouled a lot. They should have focused on playing instead of trying to do tricks. Do a trick. It's so frustrating. So I, the reason why they fouled a lot, if you th if you thought they did, I don't. I don't think they fouled a lot, but there's definitely some. There was definitely some tactical fouls. And again, it's just because of the way that they were playing. They were they were just giving a lot of possession and they were getting attacked uh, a lot. And some of those fouls they needed to do, and <laughs> it just that's how it happens. Uh, Erwin says, at least it wasn't a goleada. That's important. Yeah, at least we didn't have. A, if it was a goleada, it'd be a big, uh, a different story going into Monterrey. We're down two one. We've got a couple of uh, very realistic score lines that can happen for us to to move on or at least tie to go into extra time. So that's important. They kept the game close, not the result you wanted. You want to come out with a win, but. But like we said, there was a lot of factors that went against us and a lot of things that you hope maybe turn tides. Like, you know, football is about balance and you think like, you know, it's cyclical, everything that happens. And so you hope maybe the luck is on our side. Maybe the personnel is on our side and we have a chance to uh, to do something impressive. So we'll see. And and also, CONCACAF Champions Cup, we all agreed, was the most important tournament of the year for us. But we didn't expect Messi to get hurt this early. We didn't expect a couple of things to happen. If it, I, I'll be very disappointed if we don't advance. But we still have the MLS. We still have Leagues Cup. The season still has six months left to it. We'll be disappointed, rightfully so. I don't even want to think about that. Right but now. I'm just saying, you know, the, the season doesn't end next Wednesday, no matter how you look at it. The season doesn't end. And uh, thank God, because this is we, we would have no more episodes to film. So thankfully, the season does not end. Um, no, we got to be positive. We got to be. Oh, positive. I'm so think yeah, that right. Messi... shut up. You should have seen him last night. You want to talk about positivity? He was the most negative person within a hundred no, feet. Of the stadium. But I was, but, okay, I, I wasn't, I wasn't negative. I was in my, okay. I was in my feelings because you were in your feelings. I was in my feelings, but I was in my feelings because of the fact that Messi was, I really thought Messi was going to play. I really did. And there were a lot of Me rumblings too. Me too. and different reports that Messi was. And when it didn't, it hit me like a bag of bricks across I the face. I couldn't believe it either. I know. And I and it was just and you know why it was I, I was also in my feelings because okay, I'm okay. Well, I don't know if I'm okay, but it hurts less when Messi's missing MLS games. Like it's okay. Well, it's MLS. But you when you have things that are a uh, bigger priority and Champions Cup right now is the biggest priority, right? So when you don't have like you brought in you brought in Messi to win big things and that's what Messi has done. Messi came, yeah, we didn't get the we didn't win uh you know MLS Cup, but he brought us League's Cup. Yeah. That was huge. And I believe Next in Messi. Look, Cup is Wednesday Champions ain't Cup. over yet. It ain't over yet. There's no, no there's I know, someone I but, can't I believe in, and it's Lionel Messi. I'll tell the you that. The point much. is that he was missing a he was missing the he's missing the most important game in the history of Inter Miami, and that really just had me in my feelings. You guys should have seen me yesterday, but I I, I slept yeah. I slept, and I feel better today. Um, being here in this therapy session with you guys, you know, you know, it helps. So yeah, I'm doing better. agreed, and I think that's <laughs> I think that's a good place to. Uh, to leave because this has been incredibly therapeutic and insightful and you guys have put such amazing comments and a great discussion and look who know we don't know what's going to happen all we know is yeah there were some things that went wrong yesterday there were factors that worked against us but there's always wednesday there's this saturday where we may see we're going to see some players back from injury hopefully then we have wednesday and we we'll hopefully have a healthy Lionel messi hopefully and We'll have more than a healthy Lionel Messi. We'll have a mad Lionel Messi. And I think we've only seen him mad a handful of times. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. A mad Lionel Messi is, I, uh, I would not bet against him. I'll tell you that much. Even if it was 5 0, would not bet against it. Yeah, I love that you said that. So there was, um, there was this uh, interview uh, for Riquelme, Roman Riquelme, famous mm -hmm. from Boca. Argentina, the one of the best players, okay. and and they interviewed him. I think after the game against uh, after the game against uh, who was it? The Netherlands for the World Cup. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying. The Louis Van Gogh comments. Yeah. And uh, not the, out for him. Exactly. And they were saying basically Riquelme was saying that if you have if you if you're in front of Messi, hug him, give him a kiss. Yeah. Don't get him pissed. Exactly. Because Messi is not like other players where if you get them pissed, they'll they'll lose they'll lose their cool or they'll come in aggressive and, and kick you and maybe get a yellow, get a red card. Yeah. When Messi gets mad, it's different than other players. Messi gets mad and he responds with soccer. He responds with the way greatness. he and he'll come in with greatness and he'll he'll put the team on his back and finish games for you. And I think that we have an angry Messi right now. I think we going, have a very into, angry I think going into Monterrey, especially after what he had, the, the this altercation, verbal altercation that he had with players in the dressing room from Monterrey, dealing with that comment from Tan Ortiz, the coach from Monterrey. I think he's pissed, and I think if he plays, we have a pissed Messi going into Monterrey, into Estadio BBVA, and I think we're going to see fireworks, and I think we're going to see a result that's going to shock Concacaf. I really do. If messy place so that's we'll be here I, we'll be here watching and we will be definitely next week doing a post game live stream because we obviously will not be there at the game um yeah i mean look we, we're up because we're part of media when we get to leave we saw messi leave he was not happy i can tell you that much we were very close to him not happy and uh we shall see but for this yeah. episode of messi and co thank you all from what for watching and giving your comments and your feedback uh, I'm Ashley. That is Gian. We will be back for a preview for Colorado soon. And then the next week is going to be really fun and really exciting. So make sure you're following us on Twitter at Messi and Co. On TikTok, Messi and Co. Five Reason Sports. YouTube, Five Reason Sports, where most of you are watching this now. We will constantly be putting out new content, breaking news as we get it and our reactions to all the great things that will be happening. So thank you again, and we will see you next time. Yep. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.